Welcome back to Davos and to this special debate that we're bringing to you from the World Economic Forum here. We're currently debating Europe's banking sector, where it is and where it is heading. Uh, I want to turn to you, Lord Turner. Uh, how important do you think banking reform is for the Eurozone economy as a whole? Well, I think it is. Can I uh, first of all pick up and then I'll transition into that? Th this question of what happens after the stress test, because I think it, it, it illustrates the importance of banking reform. I mean, I, I take uh, Minister Schobler's uh, a, a, a comment earlier, we shouldn't assume that the US gets everything right or it's all transferable, but there are things to learn. And the crucial lesson uh, of the 2009 stress test in the US is that the US had a very clear answer to what was going to happen in the case of failure. And the answer was that if you failed the stress test, you were going to be told you had a certain number of months to raise the money privately, and if you couldn't raise the money privately, there would be a public uh, recapitalization. That's how the US uh, got going again with its banking system in 2009. And uh, going back to the 2010, I remember now that the other key problem we had in 2010 with the European stress test is we couldn't give the answer, well, what's going to happen if countries uh, fail? Now, I think the good news now is that the likelihood of failures of really large banks is much, much lower uh, than it was uh, before. But let's be clear, if we did get a failure of a really large bank, you can't simply say, I'm going to close it down, because when you close down really large banks, you shock the real economy. So you've got to have an answer to the question, what happens if, despite all your measures, you have an undercapitalized, you know, really large bank? You want lots of equity, so that's unlikely. You want bailable, illable debt, so that that's your next line of defense. But beyond that, you've got to be able to put in public capital. And that's the resolution fund. And I think the big danger for the Eurozone over the next 10 years is, until that fund is in place, we're still running a risk. If things went bad again, if the sovereign right. debt went back in the other direction, if we were back in a 2011-type situation, without the resolution fund uh, already in place, we would be taking very major risks. And that is one of the elements right. which is required for a working banking union. And until we're there, there is a risk in the Eurozone economy. Lord Tanner, you're obviously being quite provocative right. because I'm seeing That's the ministers and the, and the commissioner waving profusely here. Yep. Right. Um, <laughs> let's, let me ask you, Joran Dijsselboom, what's your, what's your reaction to what you just had? Um, well, uh, the, 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 what Lord Turner is saying, that it's all very unclear, but it's not unclear. What we will do is, in the main headlines, the same as what's been done in, in the States. Exactly. At the end of the process of the AQR and the stress says the banks will be given some time to go to markets, to restructure, in other words, to deal with their own problems. If they can't deal with that, I'm putting aside, of course, a category that simply isn't viable, uh, and some of them will simply have to close down. Um, they will be given time to deal with their own problems, etc. Then they will come back to the governments and say, well, need, I need more money. Um, there is only one rule, really, and that is that the state aid rules will apply. So there will be a minimum required level of bail-in uh, to be put in place. One that, once that's been done, then government money can be put in. If governments are unable to do so because it's a very large bank or the government debt position is already critical, then the ESM can step in with the banking program or uh, direct recap of banks from the ESM. That instrument we will finalize in March, so that will also be available on strict conditions uh, on the outcome of the asset quality review, which is at the end of this year. Uh, and we will deal with all of these issues, uh, but the instruments are there. That's my main point. Including direct recapitalization from the ESM? Is, is that clearly agreed? We have agreed already in June uh, on the main headlines of that political agreement. We are now work, working on the guidelines, and we will come back to that uh, in March. That's my planning. will be on the agenda of the Eurogroup. It's been agreed that it's part of the package. No, no, It'll it, be it, a stri it, on strict conditionality. It was agreed back in June 2012, and then it's taken a long time to get there. No, but we actually, in June uh, 2013, reached quite a detailed agreement on what that would look like. And we're now putting that into guidelines. But no misunderstanding, these conditionalities are quite strict. One of them is that the deeper bail-in rules will be applied directly. Uh, the rules which are part of the BRRD will start, will be general practice as of 2016. But if before 2016 a bank uh, would apply for direct recap, there would be a deep bail-in 
uh, to be uh, uh, applied first. Uh, Andrew Jane, do, do you think that the rules of the European Banking Union and what you just heard there from Minister uh, Dyson Bloom, is that straightforward to you? Um, it is. And I think more importantly, actually, um, let's not forget, this is not going to be a digital event. Recovery resolution exercises have been carried on consistently now over the last couple of years, and that's the pace at which we will go. In the event, don't forget, every bank has been forced to stress test itself. Its national regulators have been, have been stress testing as well. So it's not as if we're starting from scratch. In the event, and this will only come about if there is a profound disagreement over valuation. So the way a bank has been valuing its own assets uh, in compliance with national regulators winds up being done very differently under the aegis of an ECB-sponsored stress rule. Okay? Now walk through it. You'll first go through recovery, then you go through resolution. And as we've said, in Europe we finally have credible institutions, which we didn't have five or six years ago. And the ESM is definitely part of that. The only thing which we're saying, which is, Lord Turner, the difference between the US and Europe, uh, this will not be a pan-European response. It will be a national response. And we already don't forget, by addressing the sovereign debt problem, the issue about a country not being able to handle it, there are stress tests for national balance sheets as well. So I have confidence when you take all that together, we have what it takes. Wolfgang Schäuble, I want to ask you, is there a clear line of command in the year? European Banking Union as, as we look ahead. Is there a clear line of command? And when I say that, I mean the relationship between the national regulator and, and the European regulator and the European Central Bank. Is there that clear line of command in your view? That is, that is clear. There's a clear line and, and I think it's, it will work. <coughs> of course... Um, there are some concerns though that there could be conflicts between national regulators it, look, and, and the European regulator. It's always the same. It, if, you, if you make something new so there was a lot of concerns. And since it's always, it has to be a little bit complicated in Europe because we are one currency, one, is one central bank and uh, several uh, different nation states, member states. It makes things a little bit more difficult. Some doesn't like, don't like to join us. So you are invited, UK. Uh, yeah, to, to, to join us. Policy, yeah. Yes, I know, <laughs> but, but we, it, it works, but in the beginning there are always concerns. Of course, it's, uh, we have always to have in mind that we, we, we avoid uh, disincentives. Therefore, we have to make clear who takes responsibility for what. As long as we don't have the, the restructuring uh, fund paid in, fully paid in, and we all agree on a, on a levy that has to be paid by banks, but as long as it's, it's not, who can, who can uh, guarantee that the levy will, pay, will be paid by bank? It's only the member state. Therefore, we cannot allow to, 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 to leave the, the member state aside as long as it is not paid in. That makes it a little bit complicated, but it will work, I bet. It, it will work, it's decided. We have agreed on all instruments, and it will work with some bail-in rules, uh, of course, uh, because everyone agrees it's not, uh, uh, not only the taxpayer takes the, the final risk, it's quite clear, but uh, it will work, and uh, therefore, if there is a need for additional capital, we have uh, solutions that this capital will be raised. Federico Gizzoni, you hear the message there that it will work. Do you think it will work? Well, I'm very happy to understand that uh, the finance minister are um, very, let's say, <coughs> committed to the point. So it would be really tragedy if um, instead of having um, one regulator, we would have uh, one more. Regulators. This will be. Do you think there's a clear risk of that? I think I agree. They believe that we will have one regulator, we will have uh, one resolution mechanism, and one day we will have one fund as well. Yeah. Obviously, is uh, working in pro progress, but it's very important in this phase to have uh, the the the, the way is, uh, is is well defined, the way to get there, and it's very important to have uh, this a strong political agreement at European level. This is what makes the difference compared to, to the past. So I believe that soon we will have uh, the supervision, uh, so we will have one regulator, uh, and the banking sector will benefit from all of this, becoming at the end uh, more uh, uh, competitive and more uh, sound. Can I say something about the governance issue? Sure. There have been talks about 
for one resolution decision, you would need 120 people and nine uh, uh, institutions to be involved. Uh, I would all invite you to, I mean, that's legal text, you don't want to read it, but you might want to look at it, and you'll see that there is I'll going to be... i it tomorrow. There's going to be an executive uh, board uh, on the resolution authority with five independent members. They call in the national authorities, depending on what bank they're dealing with, and they will set a deadline. And if the deadline expires, then the five independent members can take the decision by simple majority. I mean, that's as basic as you can get. And only in big, big decisions where you need a lot of money out of the fund, then you need approval of the plenary session, the plenary board. It's not that complicated. Five independent members will, if necessary, within a set timeline, take a decision by simple majority. That's the way we're going to do it. Do you agree, Andrew Jane? Is, is, is if it? I may, it's, there has been a discussion yes, on the involvement of the council, and I think it's it's wrong. If, if like Tyson uh, just said, uh, if the board takes a decision, it's done. Of course, we have the Moroni uh, judgment in Europe that needs that requests a decision by a European institution, which the council is, is the board is not. Therefore, we have uh, agreed on the solution. If Commission does not agree. Commission can ask the Council for a decision. I bet this will never happen because the Commission will always, will always be involved in the decision of the exactly. board. And if the Commission agrees, no one else is needed for a decision. Therefore, I want to I I I pick up on a point uh, that uh, Federico Ghezoni made before. He said that there needs to be clear political unity when it comes to the, to the banking union. Let me ask you, Wally Ren, there are concerns, there are rumours that perhaps the Commission isn't on the same page as uh, the, the, the German finance minister and Germany when it comes to the banking union. Are there those uh, disagreements? In fact, uh, it's quite normal in the European Union decision making that uh, the Commission, uh, with its uh, right of initiative, uh, tries to achieve a, say, first best solution for the whole Europe. Uh, while then uh, during the process of uh, decision making both in the council with the member states uh, and uh, in the parliament uh, there will be some uh, other concerns uh, at play and uh, in the end of the day we, we nevertheless uh, we get uh, decisions uh, and we stay united uh, be behind those decisions uh, and uh, they also become european law and we work according to the according to these uh, final decisions as to this uh, question on uh, the single resolution mechanism and the resolution fund and the related governance arrangements. I believe that the outcome is, is certainly defendable. It is much less complex than often portrayed in the Anglo-American financial media. I agree with Jeroen on this. But of course, it may be, may be still improved, and that's something that in the coming two months, uh, the Council and the Parliament uh, will need to look into it. Uh, but it's essential that uh, we conclude the legislative process uh, by the end of March uh, before the European Parliament uh, leaves for its uh, electoral recess. I just want to talk about the, the, the rescue fund as well. It's been criticised for being too small. 55 billion euros eventually in around about 10 years' time. Is it too small, Wolfgang Schäuble? We discussed for a long time and uh, I was in, in I was one of was in favour of a, a, a higher higher figure, and others were in, in favour of lower figures. But we have agreed on a, on a common solution. And uh, look, it's always everyone is uh, convinced that he has the best solution and the most pro-European. But of course, in in Europe, we are we are bound to stay on the given treaty. So legal basis for all European institutions, Parliament, Commission. Council is the given treaty. The given treaty is not sufficient. In, 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 as as uh, Notorna just said, we need treaty changes. We, in some ways, it's difficult to get. But as long as we don't get, we have to, 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 stay, to work on this basis because it's the only basis. If you, if you, will, if you, will, agree, if you will impose a, 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 leave, a bank levy amounting to 55 billion, it will, be, it will be a question by court. And if the legal basis is not sound, what will happen? We will, we, in, in court, it will, it will be, it will be uh, uh, destroyed, and that is not for the stability of financial markets. Therefore, 
we are in favor of a sound legal basis in line with the complicated legal basis. That is exactly the problem we, we had uh, tackled. We find a good solution, and I'm, I'm, still, I'm convinced it will work. Okay, uh, time is running. Uh, you have to look at uh, the size of the resolution fund uh, also in the light of the new legislation on, uh, on the bank resolution and uh, recovery, which means that uh, there is uh, more rigorous uh, rules uh, for bail-in, which will reduce the need for bailout, uh, and uh, thus uh, it will uh, not uh, lead to such uh, great problems as regards still, the size of the bank. Billion euros. Frank. I mean, the, 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 the Spanish banking bailout cost, uh, I believe, around about 40 billion euros, and that was just one country. Well, you have actually three lines of defense, and this uh, is related to what we discussed uh, earlier. You have uh, first uh, the private solutions, uh, so that uh, in case you need uh, to recapitalize, uh, you go for capital markets and uh, private investors. And the European banks have been doing that. Uh, in two years, uh, 80 billion euros uh, have been raised uh, new bank uh, capital by European banks. Uh, the second line of defense, uh, national resolution uh, funds or national, national backstops, uh, fiscal backstops, uh, based on uh, the state aid rules uh, so that uh, the equity share owners and uh, junior debt uh, holders uh, would be bailed in according to those rules. Uh, and uh, then third, uh, a European line of defense, uh, which uh, might in the near future be based on the Spanish model where the ESM played its, uh, played its role with uh, clear policy conditionality, which, by the way, succeeded. Uh, Spain left its uh, banking sector reform program last year. 41 billion euros were spent, uh, not 100 billion, which was uh, the maximum. And uh, now the Spanish banking sector is uh, clearly much more healthy and resilient uh, and able to do its uh, basic job. Okay, well, time is but running away from us, unfortunately. We could add if European banks want to pay a higher levy we are ready to think about. That's right. All right. That, that's a good idea. <laughs> Maybe a gallop here. Unfortunately, gentlemen, we have run out of time. I already have a producer shouting in my ear. Um, I want to thank you for being part of this uh, panel. It's been a pleasure to, to hear from you all. And I want to thank you in the audience as well for being here. Also, last but certainly not least, thank you to you at home for watching France 24. Do stay with us.